Engineers at Cisco Systems in Richardson test a new fiber optic switching device that's predicted to change the way the world communicates. This wavelength router moves data at the speed of light to handle the huge volume of demand created by the internet. It is the equivalent of an interchange on an interstate highway, routing billions of bits of data to the right destination in a split second. An equipment bay the size of five refrigerators replaces an entire building of old telephone technology. The wavelength router contains 850,000 parts and the processing power of 700 personal computers. If you took this whole frame of equipment here, you would see that we can handle the equivalent of, again, 10 million simultaneous calls. Each of these little yellow fibers is capable of carrying this two and a half gigabits. And within this framework here, we have almost 10 miles of this fiber in here. Joe Bass says this technology was a drawing on a blackboard just two and a half years ago. Bass, who is an electrical engineering graduate from the University of Texas at Arlington, brought the technology online at startup company Monterey Networks. Cisco recently bought Monterey for a half billion dollars. Bass says high-speed fiber optic networks that form the backbone of the Internet will redefine business, politics, and society. I think in reality it's going to change everything about what we're doing, uh, to be in touch. For example, uh, you know, today it's, it's, if you're not in touch with your cell phone, generally, then you feel out of touch. And tomorrow, if you're not in touch with something that will allow you to look very quickly at your stock quotes, um, jot a note to yourself and send it off to another person, we're out of touch. To stay in touch and competitive, Cisco is expanding to 5,000 employees in Richardson's telecom corridor. Construction of an office campus is underway near the President George Bush Parkway. Thousands of daily commuters on Central Expressway pass the headquarters of Nortel, Ericsson, Alcatel, Fujitsu, and Samsung. Most probably don't realize that this is the world hub for creating broadband technology that will move huge amounts of information over a new generation of telecommunications networks. And when you do things like that and you free up this, this pipe, think of it as a big fat pipe of information, then you can do things like transmit high definition x-rays so that you can have a specialist uh, at the Mayo Clinic look at an x-ray instead of putting some child on an airplane and flying them up there and taking the time to do that. New ideas spread in telecom corridor as fast as a viral infection. The entrepreneurial spirit has given birth to more than 600 companies. It's expected to produce thousands more jobs in North Texas and applications that will change the way the world works and lives. Anusha Ansari promises to keep people and businesses connected and in touch anywhere they go. Are you trying to troubleshoot? That's why the 34-year-old Iranian immigrant developed a technological bridge between communications on the Internet and old telephone networks. It's called an intelligent IP soft switch. Soft switches are considered one of the hottest new technologies with projected total market sales of $5 billion in three years. I believe things you would see in sci-fi movies will soon become a reality and the co combining all different facets of media and communication uh, will just change the way we live and work and communicate. Ansari, who is an electrical engineer, founded Richardson-based Telecom Technologies with her husband six years ago. Telecom Technologies runs an innovative lab where telecommunications companies are free to test the compatibility and reliability of their hardware and software with the soft switch. The soft switch enables users to integrate phone, pager, email, fax, and personal digital assistant communications into one. It's all going to come together and you'll have one number to control it all so you don't need to try to tell your kids all the different numbers or your boss or your assistant all the different numbers. They'll try that one number and whatever device you happen to have depending on where you're at you'll get connected. Hello. Hello. Computer scientist Tracy Venner says star codes currently used to dial call forwarding and other features are too confusing to use. Now she says soft switch technology will let people easily customize their telephone features. They do that by using their internet web browser to pick and subscribe to new services with just a click. 
another neat feature is do not disturb, which means I'm busy right now, turn all calls off. But then I may want to know that while I had all calls turned off, my boss called. From this screen, I can tell it to send me an email if my boss calls anytime or send me an email if my mother-in-law happens to call on Sunday. The invention of the soft switch grew out of the deregulation of the telecommunications industry. Ansari recognized that would set off new competition for better services and products, and it's paying off. Working Woman magazine recently gave Ansari its Entrepreneurial Excellence Award for building an innovative and profitable company of 200 employees. I believe this is exciting time and I'm very happy to be in Richardson and see so many new companies actually starting to provide services and technology to enhance and advance this marketplace and uh, it's just a great time and great place to be. The soft switch replaces less flexible circuit based switches for about a tenth of the cost. More importantly, it means voice conversations can move from the internet to the telephone system. And not so far in the future, soft switches will help make it possible to call anybody anywhere using only their email address. Good afternoon, my name is Brian Walker, CEO of Tioba. Brian Walker feels like a contestant in a $20 billion beauty contest. Walker is trying to win the attention of investors for a second round of funding for his new internet-based company called Tiova. Walker is among 26 entrepreneurs selected to pitch their business plans to the Southwest Venture Capital Conference. There's uh, a lot of activity, a lot of different uh, ideas um, that are emerging from the marketplace, a lot of exciting new opportunities, and uh, that's what's attracting the venture capitalists here. Sam Lett is the president of QSpring, a business incubator for internet startups. Lett is looking for entrepreneurs in the technology space that make better solutions to old problems. The Capital Network, which puts on the Southwest Venture Capital Conference, picked entrepreneurs from hundreds of budding companies and groom them for this high-stakes presentation. Investors look for opportunities to cash in on what they call the next disruptive technology. They're usually answers to questions we didn't know to ask in technologies. Dan Owen is a general partner in the $40 million HO2 Venture Capital Fund that invests in early-stage Internet businesses. Owen is an interactive television pioneer who co-developed SpectraVision pay movies at hotels. His mantra is disruptive technology. We say, what are the large, rapidly growing markets, and then where are the areas of pain and bottlenecks? And then we try to find people that have developed solutions and then management teams that we think can execute. We're disrupting the way software is delivered. If you think about today how you use software, you buy it, you install it, you manage it yourself, or we're throwing all that away. If you can get to a browser, you can get to your business. And that's very disruptive for the traditional way of software delivery. Tiova disrupts the traditional way of doing business in the professional services industry. Its first client is Springbow in Irving. Springbow has rapidly expanded to 137 employees since its startup in January. Springbow is a software services factory that wants to focus on its core product of building internet business solutions for global 2000 companies. Tiova's web applications help Springbow to efficiently run a significant part of its operations. Like keep track of our resources, our people, keep track of our clients and the projects, and do so in a way that requires really part-time effort from one person as opposed to three or four people that would be required otherwise. Complicating that. The presentation by Tiova's CEO drew attention from the newly established Hunt Ventures Capital Fund. Scott Siegel says North Texas has been a high-tech sleeping giant. We're really going through another revolution here. As people talk about uh, the comparisons to the Industrial Revolution, now the Internet Revolution is taking place. Entrepreneurs looking for capital and exposure also got a shot at explaining their business plan to the host of the syndicated PBS show, Money Hunt. Miles Spencer selected Brian Walker of Tiova as the best entrepreneur of the Southwest Venture Capital Conference. Now, Walker will get 12 minutes on air to pitch his business and be grilled by a panel of financial experts. Spencer says he's looking for a great idea that's easily expressed and a company with breakaway potential. 
we like companies that have the prospect of being billion dollar companies. The third for our show is that the camera loves them. And that's always a crapshoot, as you know. Physicists at Zyvax at Richardson explore the tiny world of nanotechnology. They are trying to rearrange atoms from one form to another and literally turn coal into a diamond. A few years ago, it was the stuff of science fiction. Today, at the world's first nanotech startup, Zyvex researchers believe that someday machines smaller than the human cell will fight cancer. One of the dreams of nanotechnology is the ability to make tiny medical devices that can actually go in your body hunt down viruses that don't belong and get rid of them. Jim Von Ayer founded Zyvex three years ago. Von Ayer had already made a fortune developing freehand and other desktop publishing software. Now he's the major stockholder in Macromedia. Von Ayer envisions a world built by trillions of molecular machines that are as small as bacteria. So Zyvex is trying to create a way to assemble atoms similar to the way nature does it with an acorn. You know, the acorn has a energy source, which is the nut. It has molecular machinery, which is in the cell. It has a computer program in the form of a DNA. And the computer program tells it how to make more of these molecular machines, the purpose of which is to rearrange the atoms in dirt, air, and water, and to build an oak tree. The scientific challenge boggles the mind. Zyvex is trying to pick up and move atoms into precise positions without defying the laws of physics and chemistry. So far, Zyvex has been able to push around molecules on a surface. But Von Ayer envisions a robotic molecular assembler that could start replicating itself until its form becomes visible to the human eye. Zyvex researchers experiment with carbon nanotubes that in diameter are one ten thousandth the size of the human hair. It could potentially change materials technology. Well, imagine if a building designer had materials a hundred times stronger than steel. Imagine what kind of buildings they could make out of that. Current manufacturing methods like this state-of-the-art milling machine at Zyvex still make things out of blocks of raw material in a wasteful process. Nanotechnology would build things atom by atom in an ecologically sound manner. Today's manufacturing technology creates pollution as a byproduct because it's inefficient technology. The more efficient our technology becomes, the less waste there would be. Von Ayer has invested $14 million in building one of the top five nanotech labs in the world. Considering your personal stake in this, do you, do you ever wake up in the middle of the night and wonder, am I doing the right thing? Well, I think about that quite a bit. Uh, I'm convinced that nanotechnology is coming. I'm convinced that if I do nothing, we will have it in 50 years. But I'm also convinced that if I do the best that I can do and hire the smartest people that we can find, that we can have it in less time. And if we can have it in my lifetime, I get to have a longer, healthier, more interesting life. Zyvex is about to move from pure research to development. Its silicon micro machines hold the promise of making a better artificial ear, which can directly stimulate nerves that create hearing. Von Ayer believes that over the next 20 years, nanotechnology will be at the forefront of prolonging life.